to my cousin asked me a favor if I could build this PC for her so basically these parts were just brought in my office and I don't really have an idea how much is the total price since they told me it was individually purchased in different stores more like they were hunting PC parts in affordable price and I guess everything they bought was well thought out anyway we will check out the PC parts build it and test it afterwards if you want to see the outcome, stay tuned and watch the video. Hey what's up guys, it's Mac here and we do a lot of tech related videos like this one. If this is your first time, consider subscribing. With that said, let's begin. First let's check out the processor. So this is the Ryzen 5 3600 and the most popular CPU amongst the PC builders nowadays. Even after the release of the Ryzen 5000 series, people are still buying this processor. Well, there are two things. One, it is affordable. And two, there are no stocks of the 5000 series for some reason. Anyway, this has a 6 core 12 threads, base clocks of 3.6 GHz and a max boost clocks to 4.2 GHz. It has a very good performance for its price, a good processor for gaming and multitasking productivity. We won't be using the stock cooler this time but this is what we're going to use to make our processor temperature go down. So this is called the ID Cooling Aura Flow X240 Tough Gaming Alliance. This will perform very well since our Ryzen 5 3600 gets really hot during rendering. We'll be testing this out after we build it, just keep watching to see the results later. This also has an RGB design in the top Alliance logo as well as the included fans, we can sync it in the motherboard RGB header. And speaking of motherboard, we have the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. This is a good motherboard with tons of features. It supports 1st, 2nd and 3rd gen Ryzen CPUs and obviously we have the 3rd gen for this build. This also supports the DDR4 memory up to 4133 MHz which is perfect for our RAM states and we'll talk about more about that in a bit. This motherboard has an extended heatsink design, M.2 Gen 3 times 4 and this all of this good stuff but we will not go into details but if you want to know more about it just check out their website in the description below. Now for our memory, we have the G-Skills Trident Z 2x8GB in 3600MHz. We'll be able to maximize the RAM speed using the motherboard by turning on the XMP in the BIOS. This is a nice looking memory sticks with RGB design to make it pop up a little bit. Now for our boot drive, we'll be using the Western Digital SN550 250GB NVMe M.2. This is a nice choice as well since uh, we'll be able to take advantage of the M.2 Gen 3 times 4 of the motherboard. This NVMe storage is very popular as well and in our last build we also used the same. By the way, if you want to check that build out, make sure you check out the card at the top right side corner of your screen. For our graphics card, we'll be using the Zotac Gaming RTX 2060 with 6GB of memory. This has a 1920 CUDA core, 6GB of GDDR6 memory, 192-bit memory bus and engine clock in 1680MHz. It doesn't only have a good specs but it is aesthetically pleasing as well in my opinion. I can't wait to install this and try it out. Anyway, if you want to know more details about this graphics card, make sure you check out the website or their website at the link in the description below. Powering the whole system will be this bad boy over here. It's called the NZXT C650. This is a 650 watts power supply in 80 plus gold certified, which is the number one thing that you should look for in a power supply. So my cousin made a very good choice here. This is also fully modular and I like that since we won't have any extra cables in the case. By the way, opening this box is the most satisfying unboxing I ever had, at least amongst the boxes in this build. Moving on, so this will be our chassis for this build. It is called the Rock Halia, and unfortunately, this is only available in the Philippines, but we have a recommended chassis available worldwide in the link in the description below. 
Anyway, this is the full tower chassis focused on airflow. No dust filter in front but it has one for the power supply and on the top exhaust. There is also a single 120mm fan in Molex is included as exhaust but we are not going to use it since uh, it will look awkward in our build. Having a non-RGB fan running in full RPM all the time and we don't want that. Instead we'll be using the ID Cooling DF12025 ARGB Trio. A nice looking fan that has a remote control to uh, control the fan speed and the RGB colors. We can use the PWM connector to the motherboard so we can control the fan curve in the BIOS or in the software included. Unfortunately, we can't sync the RGB since the this trio fans has a 3-pin RGB connector and our motherboard has 4-pin. So to my cousin, this is a wrong choice. If you got any solution or ideas how to sync this to the motherboard, please let us know in the comment section below. Anyway, uh, these are all the parts and now I guess it's time to build it. So, let's go. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Right, boy. sound right boy now before we check out some performance let me just inform you that we'll be using a 1440p 144 hertz monitor in our testings we didn't do any cpu overclocks we just turned on the xmp so that we could maximize the performance of the rams in 3600 megahertz we won't do an intensive test on this build but some just a uh, basic benchmark on gaming performance so let's check out the scores
Now let's talk about my build experience. Let me share the things that I don't like first before I share the things I love about the building process. First of all, the PC case is built for airflow. If you're going to build something in this chassis, you should be using an air cooler rather than an all-in-one liquid cooler like we are using right now. Why you may ask? Well, the orientation of the rad is really limited and if you try to put it on front, you will be uh, occupying everything else and you won't be able to put a 120mm fan below. You can't also put it on the top because there isn't enough space. If you got a larger GPU, this will be a problem but fortunately for this build, we got a small graphics card. Switching the front orientation of the radiator is not advisable according to Gamers Nexus, so we are stuck in this. But the good thing is, it doesn't look bad at all. Not only that, but also the ID Cooling Trio fans RGB. It can't be sync in the motherboard header, so we have to rely on the remote and that's really a downer in my opinion. But we have no problem with the AIO and its included fans. We can connect it to the motherboard. And lastly, I don't recommend using the included thermal paste of the AuraFlow AIO since we are hitting like 51C in idle. Well, that is really bad. So I thought uh, the cooler was not making contact with the CPU. So I checked the contact on the pump if it is running but it seems everything is working fine but the temps are still the same. So I figure out I need to change the thermal paste so I reapplied some using Arctic MX4. Then we got a reasonable idle temperature around 35C to 38C. Take note that I live in a tropical country. It is very hot in this place so I think this is good enough. Now for the things I like the most is the good airflow of the case. We got a good temperature even in ultra settings of some games we tested. The tempered glass panel is a bit thin but I love how it looks. Hopefully it doesn't break easily anytime soon. There is no included hard drive in the build but it's a good upgrade path in the future since we have a hard drive caddy in the PSG shroud. Overall, I love how it looks and I am satisfied of the outcome. Now here are my final thoughts about the whole build. For the performance of the build, I love the outcome. I think this rig is good for 1440p gaming and I never had a lag in Dark Souls 3 in max settings. Though we saw some FPS drops in CSGO but I think we just have to lower the settings of the game to get a better FPS. I wanted to test more games but there was no more space in the drive for me to download more games. I don't want to delete and add new games because it takes too much time and effort. I guess I need a dedicated drive for me to just plug in the new PC builds for tests. I think this is one of the things that I need to do for next year's PC builds. As for the rendering, the results are reasonable for the build. And I really love it. Not to mention the temperature we are getting in our stress test. It is awesome. If there's anything I could have changed in this build, the first one will be the PC case. I mean, Rockley is nice and affordable, but the build feels flimsy and weak, especially the frame. It has a lot of flex. Also, the tempered glass is too thin in my opinion. If you're not too careful, you could break it easily. The included 120mm fan is terrible and very loud. Perhaps that is because of the Molex connector that keeps running in full speed. Well, either way, I end up not using it. I think uh, Forge S from Techware is better than this since it only costs about $67 with 4 RGB fans included. Take note, it is not Molex but PWM with 4 pin RGB. It also has a bigger space for 200mm radiator at the top and it is easy to work with cable management. Other than that, I think adding a hard drive for games will also be an awesome upgrade in the future. Well, overall, it's an awesome piece of build, good for gaming, productivity, and multitasking. If you have the same budget like this one, what PC parts will you choose? Please let us know your list in the comment section below. 
if you want to build something similar like we have in this uh, video we put the parts list in the links in the description below for you to check it out using those affiliate links will help this channel do more videos like this so consider it as a support for us so that's it guys if you found this video interesting and helpful make sure you give us a thumbs up and share it thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one